welcome to the GitLab AMA. And it's made up of, it consists of your questions getting answered or getting waffled by me. I'm sure getting waffled is appropriate English. But my attempt at answering your questions. Simon opens it up. How was my birthday? It was really good because uh, Karen, my wife, organized a birthday party for us together because she's, uh, her birthday was uh, five, five days before uh, July 29th. Um, so we invited a couple of friends and uh, the, that was really fun. I think the noteworthy points were that we got a Susie's cake, which is really delicious birthday cake. We also got an edible arrangement with its all kind of fruit cut up and then uh, dipped in chocolate. Um, wasn't the biggest success, but it looked really well. Um, and we have this, uh, this, this thing for the, uh, the drinks. It's an inflatable like mini pool or something. It's this high, it's pretty wide. And then you can put all your drinks in there and then pour ice over it. It's, it's, uh, it's been an amazing party trick, but it was a uh, really fun on Friday night. So we asked if a zombie burst into your room right now, what? nearby object would you use to fight the zombie? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is this pen. So I think I'll die. Let's see what, what another option is here. This thing looks pretty sturdy. It's a joystick. Um, so I'm probably gonna die. And there's, I got lots of monitors here, so maybe take one of those big ones. Uh, Clement asks, what do you use to keep up with all the hacker news activity? I'm ashamed to admit, I just check hacker news throughout the day. Just refresh the homepage. There's no special sauce to it. <laughs> Edible arrangements are a nice way of saying, here's some beautiful fruit to throw out. <laughs> Hannah, as it you are a fan of podcasts, and if so, what's your favorite or go-to podcast? Um, I like them. I, I listen to them regularly when I was running more. Um, now I injured my foot, and now I have to, I'm on a stationary bike, which allows me to check my phone. So that's been one of the best things. Um, great podcasts are the A16Z podcast. Uh, y Combinator has a great podcast. Um, and then um, I check a blog for it, but um, Marginal Revolution and Overcoming Bias are two blogs, econ blogs I, I, I read regularly. I'm, I'm kind of an economy nerd. Um, so those uh, sometimes have a podcast link. Yes, I'm gonna be dead with that zombie. Uh, Connor asks, well, GitLab staff get the opportunity to invest in or purchase GitLab stock pre-IPO? I think the answer is no there. William asks, there used to be a Hacker News plugin for mentions of GitLab channel, but seems to have broken. Yes, um, we're trying to fix it. It's, uh, I think it's Notifyly and it's, it's not been working. So uh, our community advocates are trying to restore it, but so far no luck. Mark asked about a partnership. Uh, we're trying a lot to keep this call. Maybe we'll see how it goes, but maybe allow this call to go uh, to be public. But uh, to, to answer your question, uh, no. Jace asked, when we, can we expect a new podcast to be released with talks about GitLab? Uh, you did it on the change log, quota ratio, the architect show. Um, yeah, when, when a host uh, of, of a podcast invite me, I'll take, I'll take any opportunity to talk about GitLab. So they should email press at gitlab.com or if you can make an intro, that's, that's welcome too. Jason asks, what's an important part of the culture at GitLab that new employees don't tend to realize right away? Um, two things, I, I think one, 
everyone's kind of afraid because we're remote that it it's uh, uh, that there's little social interaction and I, I think we're doing a good job of facilitating that and it's you don't feel it's not as lonely as people expect there we're, we're talking about things you can do um, the coffee chats there's the team call um, so I think uh, that's above expectations. And then I think they underestimate how hard it is to iterate. Like they're all like, oh, iteration is great and I love it and it's so beautiful. And I iterated in my last job too. And then they come in here and I'm like, um, you got to do something much smaller than that. And they're like, well, I'm not finished yet. I, I want to ship. And they were like, nope, you got to ship this. And oh, it takes a while to, to get used to it. Daniel asked, if you could change one thing about GitLab, what would it be? Um, a GitLab.com that's more available. When it comes to GitLab, what are you most proud of this far? I'm proud of us um, shipping. Uh, I think it's, I'm, I'm amazed every single month we have a release and then I look at the the stuff we shipped and it's, it's beyond belief. It's beyond what any other company is able to accomplish. And, uh, um, I think it's an amazing achievement and that, uh, that takes everyone in the company like that takes sales, uh, selling what we have instead of, of, of panicking our development teams with features that have to ship now that, that takes support dealing with the stuff that isn't going well and helping to fix it. it. It takes everyone in the company to accomplish that, but we do accomplish that together. And I think it's a superpower and, and we're unstoppable. As long as we keep shipping, we're unstoppable. And there's a question in which I'll answer after stopping the recording. If a person with a karaoke machine burst into your room, what song would you sing? Um, Karen and I have a go-to song. It's from Greece. So probably that one, but Karen would have to be here. She's probably already left for work. So then I do um, a, a Dutch song and it's uh, called um, The Vlieger, which is, um, it's about a, a kid whose mom passed away and uh, he wrote a letter to her and he wants to deliver it to the heavens. So he has a kite and he lets up the kite with the letter to his mom. It's a big tearjerker and it's, uh, it's one of those kind of campy songs that uh, uh, I sang in my student days. And I might have also performed it at, uh, at a company event at Karen's family when we were just dating for half a year. Relationships survived that. Uh, nothing to report on the CMO search. We're still searching. We have some good candidates, but we could always uh, use more. And and um, we're investing a lot of time, but but nothing seems imminent. Ah, Chase asks, would you rather have a two-year head start on groundbreaking product or two-year head start on growth? You can pick only one. Chase has been reading uh, the interview with Mark Andreessen, which said that you have to pick the two-year head start on growth. I read the same interview, um, and I think uh, there's, there's an underlying truth, and then it's uh, known in the Valley, like, most things are not, most groundbreaking companies, groundbreaking, most super successful companies, they don't innovate on product as much as they innovate on their business model. And I think ours is no exception. And I think our business model is that um, we are an open core company. So we work with the rest of the community. Um, we co-create with our customers. Instead of our customers all making their own DevOps solution by integrating all kinds of tools and, 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 and doing that, it's, it's more than 2,000 people that contributed code together to make that work. 
And that's a, that's a new delivery business model. The last innovation in business models in our industry was Atlassian, who said, hey, instead of having this very convoluted sales process, there's a big market for direct sales. We put the prices on our website, it's affordable and people can self order. Big innovation, big success. I think we learned from that, what we learned is we have to have the prices on our website. And we, for a certain part of the market, direct sales is a very efficient way to do that. And we need low, low price tiers. So we've done that, we are a hybrid sales organization. And there's less call us on our website and there's more, here's the price. If you want, you can order it directly yourself. So that's what we need to keep doing because that was the last innovation in our industry. Now our innovation is this open core model where you co-create with your customers and that leads to uh, great growth and a, and a product advantage. Uh, we can bite off more product because we don't have to add the depth ourselves. We can work with our customers to do it. So is that one or the other? I think it's, I think it's both. So I'm, I'm not going to pick only one. Uh, my answer to your false dichotomy is meh. Um, agree that iteration and MVC is the hardest thing to believe. Once you're over that and start shipping, it's amazing. Yes, Brendan, exactly. Would I rather have wings or own a lightsaber? And considering Bay Area traffic, wings for sure. And uh, yeah, rather not have, do something violent. That's the last play I played a video game and which was it? It was either um, explain, that was what the joystick was for, and there's a piece of rudder pedals right next to me here, or it was, uh, I think, Star Wars 2, um, but I'm stuck now in a level where there's some kind of round device and I have to go around it and, and, and flip some switches, but I constantly get shot down. I'm really bad and I, I, I cannot play the online games because I get slaughtered. <laughs> Clement asks, what are you most nervous about whenever you do an AMA? Whether, whether we can make the recording public? Because I love to make them public afterwards. Simon asks, am I still doing flying lessons? No, um, I've, I've like taken one flying lesson, but Karen said it was on the condition that I wouldn't do like the complete thing because it's a very uh, a social thing. Like you got to do lots of solo flights. So that's not a lot of fun for Karen. So the agreement is as long as I heads down working on GitLab, I, I cannot take flying lessons, which is okay. Joe asks, what's the worst job you ever had? Um, there was one that was hard physically and one that was hard psychologically. Physically, it was my first job. My dad arranged it and it was getting potatoes out of the ground. Uh, Dutch people also known as potato eaters. Uh, they grow really well in the Netherlands. And there was one farmer that was kind of too cheap to hire machinery to get the potatoes out of the ground. And uh, so he had his uh, children and me go on our knees and get the potatoes out. Um, it sucked not so much because the pay was very low, but because I was kind of competing with the farmer's son who was way better at this and way faster than me. So I felt really incompetent. Also it was kind of backbreaking work. I think I did it for like two afternoons and afterwards I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, the other really bad job I had um, was with, uh, at the end of university, I did an, uh, I did uh, kind of an internship um, and I had a, a boss who already knew she was going away and everyone in the company knew except she forbid everyone in the company from telling me. So I was like the only person that didn't know. And because she knew she was going away, she acted way different and it was really bad boss to work for. 
and I had a really miserable time. I felt extremely depressed in my little cubicle. After that, I got a really nice boss, which has like, been the best boss I've ever had. Um, but like not being transparent when you could have been uh, really caused a lot of uh, anxiety for me. Venga Boys are too unlimited for worst popular Dutch musical group ever. No, 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 no. There's no limit. There is no limit, no mountain too high. And actually, I know more to unlimited songs than you'd f figure. Uh, figure like um, Take Me Away to Paradise, lots, lots of Dutch songs I, I know. Kyla, what's the best career advice you've ever received? Um, it's online and it, it says, do something between the intersection of a few things. Um, one is you got to be good at it. Two, you got to like it. And three, it has to be useful. Uh, so, so not very useful career advice is do something you love. Okay, that's, that's one out of three. You got to make sure you get all three. So it should be something that you like doing, but you should also be competent at it. Like, I like swimming, but I'm not very good at it. So I probably should not make my career out of it. I like karaoke singing, but I'm not very good at it. So something you love that you're good at and that's useful for society. A certain stuff, which it's just much harder to make a living because there's much more competition. Like if, if you like being part of a band and you're really good at it, it's not, there's not a lot of demand for that. Like there's a lot of other people trying and only a few people uh, earning a living. So figure out something where there's more demand and then your odds of success are, are greater. Also asked how tall I was when I was farming for those potatoes. I was, uh, I think I was 16, so probably um, six, eight, which, I'm now, I think. Clement asks, would you ever consider buying a house in the Bay Area? Um, yes, but um, I'm not in a rush. I think the market is still due for a correction and they're very expensive and I, I don't have the money. Sue so asks, if you could de design your dream house, what are some of the rooms you'd have? Oh, wow, that's a nice question. So if it's gonna be like a super big one, probably have a fitness room, uh, a game room. Um, the thing that's working right now is our boardroom where you come in, you have all these televisions, like everyone comes in like, wow. And they totally forget that it's like a work live apartment and they're, it's kind of a weird situation. They're like super impressed by all the, all the dashboards that we put up there. So I'd, I'd have something like that again. I'd, uh, yeah, something like that. I'd like, if it was a company, I like the companies where you don't have to go to security, but there's meeting rooms before security. So if you have visitors, you can just all meet there. Um, I'm not sure how that factors into a personal house. <laughs> Clement asks, what would you have done if GitLab failed while you were bootstrapping it? Phew, that's a good question. Um, I still had my day job, so that was good. Now Madden was already working on it full time, so but I've worked on Madden before on other stuff, so we would have found something else. Um, so I'd, I'd still be doing Ruby on Rails. Um, If it would, uh, if GitLab would fail now, which I, which I don't expect um, and I don't hope, but uh, I'd, I'd go start probably something with uh, e-learning or maybe with Meltano or something like that. So not asked, what advice would you give to new GitLabbers? I would say, um, 
the first month is pretty rough because there's so many things to learn. So people report feeling a bit, um, feeling a bit lonely actually. Um, but they also report that it's better after the first month. Um, so keep doing those virtual coffee breaks and, and it's, it's normal and it's going to get better. And when we say everyone can contribute, we mean it. So let's keep, let's keep those merch requests coming to improve things. Did you all, always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur or was it more a function of GitLab and the opportunity here? So GitLab is like my fourth company. So I think I always wanted it. Um, it's a combination of different things. I hate interviewing. Um, so I feel really bad every time I'm on the other side of the interview, which I regularly am. I know how stressful it is. And, and sometimes I forget for a minute and I have to remind myself like, ah, oh, if I was in day shoes, interviewing sucks. It, it's kind of super hard. You're selling yourself, which isn't super comfortable. Um, but I, I tend to like see things where I'm just really excited about want to make a business out of it. And uh, the first one was selling infrared receivers. And that was in my first year at university. And um, later on, I did something with a friend where we had an app store for web applications. And the third one, I wasn't a shareholder, but I incorporated the company was the first employee of uh, Cubot Works. We made uh, recreational submarines. I think I'm six, eight. Oh, Cindy, insightful question. Your experience as an intern must have shaped your value for transparency. What experiences shaped some of the other values? Um, yeah, so lots, lots of our values come from stuff I didn't like at other companies I worked at. Um, there were, so efficiency comes from like, don't waste our time. Now in general, like Dutch people are like that. Um, where per worked hour, they're one of the most efficient uh, workforces in the world. Uh, we don't like waiting. We don't like needless coordination and things like that. Um, and I've, I've seen some big companies and, and big government organizations where I worked at, where that shaped that value. Results, I think it's just more, more results, like bring, make everything else possible, but it's also more fun to be focused on results. Uh, and I've been in cultures where like you stay with your bum in your seat until your manager was gone. And I think it's, it's just ridiculous. You're, you're actually like biding your time. You have nothing else to do and you're just waiting. Um, because this is going to be public, it's kind of hard to talk about the exact examples because I want, don't want to throw those companies under the bus, but, but a lot of this came from that. I also also been at a company where everyone was hired from like the same student fraternity. Um, so that, that, that's a really bad idea. Uh, so I, I believe in diversity in and of itself, but I've also seen what can happen if, if you're not doing that, you're hiring people that are all the same. Adio asks, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? It's hard to weigh them, but one really insightful one is uh, from Vili, one of our investors who said, to run a, su a successful growth company, you need at least 60% margins. And I thought like, that's ridiculous. You don't need 60% margins. You can, like a great company can have 20% margins, but it's, there's a lot of truth in that. If you have 60% margins, you can invest in sales and marketing to keep growing the company. Do I want to consider moving back to the Netherlands uh, in the future? Maybe, but probably not. We're really happy here. I feel very fortunate to be able to live in San Francisco. Um, I like that the people here are very talented, very ambitious, and, and the opportunity is here to do great things. You see people doing great things. And, uh, and I, I want to be there where that happens. Of course, the weather and nature also don't hurt. Mike appreciates the positive feedback I gave. Uh, 
during the interview. Thanks for that. I still have some way to go, but I'm getting better at it. <laughs> so yeah, so are your best friends. Also, I think we would be great best friends. Well, Surya, I think I think the same. And uh, I'll uh, can, can you please put in a, a, a coffee chat with me? So uh, if you're up for that, a virtual coffee break. Uh, my best friend is a guy who's also here in the Bay Area. His name is Jose, and he runs a company called Sasuke. And he doesn't like me saying this. This is going to be public, so he's going to be angry. But he's actually curing cancer. Uh, he's working on a thing for local drug delivery. And he's doing it with a click chemistry. And I think it has a lot of potential. He's also a super, super nice person and super thoughtful. And uh, uh, I saw him yesterday and uh, we reminisced a bit that we, uh, we did a trip to Peru together. Uh, it was great. He was our tour guide, but also he proposed to his now fiance. So uh, that's my best friend. Bianca asks, how do you see MVC apply to roles like partnerships and sales? Um, yeah, to, to, instead of making a big plan, um, so MVC is minimum viable change and in a partnership, you don't want to make one big plan and then take nine months to bring that to fruition, but you want to do many small things together, like do a blog post, do a talk together, do a small technical thing instead of building this elaborate thing. <laughs> What will be my GitLab haiku? That's a great question, but it's uh, it's uh, too hard to do on this call. Cool, I'll stop the recording.